Hi, my name is Marion Kumi. I'm at Ryerson University in Toronto, where it is four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, in different places in the world, it is many different times. And in Auckland, New Zealand right now, it is 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for us, but this morning for them. Danny Mulrannan is in Auckland, New Zealand at Auckland University of Technology. And also in another location in this same building is Rob Hadari, who is a radio and television art student. So hello to both of you. Hello, Mary. Hi. So, Danny, the, you know, we, we watch television all the time and see this kind of thing on CNN's Situation Room and see that it's possible to talk to different places at the same time. But this is kind of a new and unusual technology, I'm and like we're to hoping to be able to partner our two universities using it. And I'm wondering uh, just how you feel about that. We're really excited, Mary, and I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, we in Auckland, New Zealand, uh, obviously in the South Pacific, we're a long way away from the rest of the world. And for us to have an opportunity to participate in something that um, gives us that connection to um, universities like Ryerson and some of the others we've been talking about uh, in Europe is a fantastic chance. And um, for us, you know, we have some postgraduate students who are coming on the stream next year, and it's the thing that we really want to focus on with them so that they get a chance to um, share ideas and news and knowledge and deliver some content which has an application just beyond our own uh, Pacific Island shores. And I know uh, Rob is a fourth year student here at Radio and Television Arts and he's participating in a project that I'm spearheading along with your colleague Martin Hurst at AUT called The Global City. And this is an opportunity for students around the world to talk to each other and work on stories together. But Rob, what sort of difference would it make for you to be able to collaborate on stories in live, real time like this without using having to use satellite technology? I think part of what would help us with live technology is that with news, things happening right now is really important. And this type of technology lets us collaborate with someone in Edinburgh or Auckland so we get time or time anywhere in the US or Canada or anywhere, anywhere really and find out what's happening right now update yeah, our stories okay. immediately and provide a global oh, talk perspective that we wouldn't have before. Yeah. Because I have a long-term goal with this project, which is to have the chair of my department calls it SNN, Student News Network, in which we have 24-hour news bulletins that whenever you're awake, that's when your location would be running it, and we'd all feed our stories in to a big repository of stories and then get to work with each other so that I might finish my newscast and then throw to you, Danny, in New Zealand. We would debrief each other on, on uh, the news, and then off you would go and carry on from there. And that sort of thing to me is so exciting because it allows the students to meet each other face on and work together on stories. And for me, the Global City is all about finding out how the same story looks differently, or the same, depending on where you are in the world. Absolutely, and a lot of the themes um, that you're probably picking up on there are really quite global. You know, the issues that we have here in terms of uh, economic or you know, sort of, uh, weather, all of those kind of things, um, ecology, uh, issues that you're definitely going to have uh, somewhere like Canada or elsewhere in the world. But the thing that I find is really exciting is the learning that's going to occur for those students by being part of this huge link up and just by sharing the experiences um, on a local level and um, getting that across to you know, people in other countries is going to be really quite substantial. And for our guys to um, you know, work that into the curriculum and develop some of the things that they would never get a chance to do in any other way is really, really quite neat. And I can see that the networks here in New Zealand in particular will be very interested um, once things all come together because this is something that they probably haven't looked at doing themselves. You know, they're very much reliant on the satellite and so forth, but to actually have um, you know, a, a web-based resource like this, you know, which we support for Super Skype, um, is really quite, quite a fantastic thing. And you see, we do quite, um, we interface very closely with the networks, and we're very mindful of what they're wanting us to teach. And increasingly, <coughs> that need the students to be able to um, convey information and also to go live and talk from the heart about what their experiences are. Um, this is going to be such a wonderful platform for them. Yeah, I'm sure that so, so is the case in both of your um, locations as well. Well, exactly, and that the project I'm working on, the students are coming up with ideas and then finding ways to collaborate with each other. So there was a, a student at AUT who did a story on gay marriage, and we were looking at then 
gay marriage and its legalities or illegalities around the world. So if your student did a story on that, then perhaps here in Toronto, Rob might go out and interview a married gay couple about their relationship. Someone in Edinburgh might do some statistics and put those up on the same location. Um, or we could use this technology to, you could look at the video story, um, and then maybe Rob's interview would be live into your news bulletin. Uh, so there's so many ways of, of using this as opposed to just, you know, the way CNN uses it with their right. situation room, cool. where they've got, you know, the huge awesome. platform behind them and all the different images from around the world. But the fact that it's not satellite and it's so, I'm seeing you and hearing you Doesn't in matter. real you time and great clarity, and I think the same is, uh, is true for both of you as well. And Rob, I was just interested in knowing, you know, as, as someone who's about to, to graduate and go into this world, how could you see this kind of, um, of system, this kind of technology being part of your working life? Well, I mean, I work a lot with technology, and I think one of the really interesting things here is that everyone has internet connections now, and so uh, you touched on this earlier, without having used satellites for this, we now have taken away one of the huge barriers to these live connections. Uh, this is experimental at this point, we're still working on it, but the internet connection being used to pipe high quality video and audio anywhere means that in the workplace, I do not have these barriers. I can go into a newsroom and say, I'm gonna pull this story from anywhere I want to, going to anywhere I want to, all I need is an internet connection. No, absolutely. And it's, um, we were just talking about the tragedy that recently happened in New Zealand before we went on um, air here about the, the miners who died. And if this kind of technology was up and running quickly and you had someone who was in Chile, you could go to someone who was one of the survivors of the mining incident there and have someone instantly, you know, online with you using something fairly simple as opposed to hooking up, having to hook up to satellites every time you wanted to, to do something like this. Exactly, and one of the things that um, the Kiwis are well known for is travelling, and a lot of our students, once they graduate, will um, disappear off overseas and they'll go to like the States or Canada or, or Europe, and having that opportunity to maintain that connection with them and if we have somebody that's based in, say, uh, London, for example, and there is a story which occurs which um, is really relevant to our country, you know, to be able to find that person, hook them up through the university up there is, um, is a, real, a real bonus. So you can imagine we have this little army of Kiwis that um, they graduate, they get their degree, and then for some reason they like to leave this country, you know, God knows why. But, um, you know, off they go, they do all these amazing things um, and get their life experience, and if we can be part of that extended journey for them and then eventually they'll come back and return to our industry here. Um, well, it's, you know, it's as um, being, you know, a little older, I can remember <laughs> uh, all of the different technologies when students used to travel and you'd say, go and travel the world and send back stories. Well, in the days that the beta cam was this big and you'd have to take it, and the smaller and smaller technology, it would be wonderful to envision a time when, you know, you've got your little tiny mini camera that shoots television quality and maybe you've got one of these little, uh, um, my, my technical word is gizmos that, um, that my colleague Rick Grunberg, who's the brains behind all of this, I can just picture students with one little tiny box full of everything they need, traveling the world and being able to send stories back. Like you said, New Zealanders um, love to travel the world and how great, um, and, and you know, beyond, this is the beyond Skype and beyond Facebook kind of thing. We're almost exactly. there. Are we, we're almost there, Rob, are we? <laughs> That's fantastic. And it's wonderful that this technology allows us to do that. You know, I know you've... What, one of, the, one of the, the, the strange barriers I find in trying to develop projects like this is still the vast differences in our times. Um, that, you know, that there we are now, it's 10 after 4. Um, so this is a pretty good time for our two countries because it's morning there, everybody's awake, I've had Skype meetings with New Zealand before where it's been midnight in New Zealand and in um, Edinburgh, Scotland, it's noon and everybody's running off and doing different things. So it's, it's the one thing message to Marion with the ISB with to ask about how can it affect the real broadcast community so too. And in New Zealand right now, you're heading off on your summer holidays. 
and um, you'll be still on summer holiday Anybody when you catch that? school. Call so the coordination that? that still has to happen is how to make something like this um, 24 hours a day, 12 how weeks of the year, consider all of our very different semesters and times of day. Yes, okay. but I can certainly um, suggest that when it's a heat of the summer here in New favorite. Zealand, it will be so. very refreshing to get um, some footage of Toronto <laughs> with a nice, crisp, <laughs> cool snow <laughs> on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'd all be willing to switch with you. <laughs> and I don't know, Rob, I was going to ask you about the barriers for students, because a lot of times th this is a wonderful new toy, and I'm sure a lot of students would want to play with it. But are you willing to take part in things that you don't get grades for? If someone said to you, come into Ryerson at 3 o'clock in the morning to do one of these things with New Zealand, but it's not for an assignment and it's not for a credit, would you be willing to do it? I think you're going to find students have passion for this type of groundbreaking technology, both from a technical standpoint and the content standpoint. We have a lot of students here at Ryerson, and I've done some traveling, and I I think it's the same around the world. There's a lot of students who are interested in learning for the sake of learning. That's why they're at a university. And so, yeah, I think the answer is yes. And I was going to ask both of you, how, how do you think this kind of technology that we're using right now will affect the broadcast world? Danny? Well, I think it's going to um, make a huge uh, difference in terms of, you know, real time. You know, I find with my students, because we have to teach a lot of technical stuff that uh, it would take me like a day to get them to do what they would normally do in say a three hour shift, um, you know, in terms of producing content. So things are going to be a lot slicker. Uh, it means I have the opportunity to spend more time working on um, what the story is rather than getting caught up in the technological requirements um, that go with that story. Um, we're going to turn things around a lot more quickly so therefore they get more opportunities for learning. That's going to be the main thing I can see from where I'm coming from. And Rob, how about you? How do you think this will affect the broadcast world? I think it ties into what we've been saying before. It changes timelines, something that you could do in a day before, you can do in three hours now. You're not waiting for tapes to arrive in the mail or for a satellite uplink to be available at a certain time. You can just get out and get it done when it needs to be done. As someone who's worked in a lot of newsrooms in my life, I, I remember the days in which you'd hear some disaster had happened and you would have to wait hours and hours for a camera to get there and then for a satellite feed to happen and then to be able to get it on the air. Now if you've got a newscast or news bulletin at noon and it happens at five minutes to noon, they expect you to have it on the air in five minutes and this is the sort of technology that will allow people, as you were saying Rob, to just make it happen because the um, citizen journalism as well, people with their little cell phone technologies and the ability to transmit these sort of pictures quickly and then the quality of them as I'm sitting looking at both of you and we're all, yeah, it's really, really good quality and the, the, um, the lack of time delay with hearing each other as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think, um, you know, I can sort of cast my mind back to the good old days of shooting on film where you actually have to go and shoot something and then wait around for it to be processed. I mean, this is a whole different kind of ball game oh, what, we, what we've seen here. Really and really I think also that the audiences that are watching this content, a lot of that will be students, um, so you know, they're, they're becoming more sophisticated all the time, you know, they're becoming more demanding, they want more than we're able to provide, so therefore, you know, we're actually tailoring content in a way that is going to satisfy um, the needs of the viewing audience just as much as, you know, achieving uh, what we can for our students in terms of learning outcomes. So it's kind of like a double, a double way thing. And um, I mean, anybody can go out there and shoot oh, well. some video now. Um, so to be able to actually bring something that it's looks so great easy. and is delivered so quickly and um, can take the new story even that step further um, well, is really important. Well.